In this video, I'm going to show you something that no other YouTube channel will ever show you. Just how clean is your aquarium? Do you think that when you do a water change, it makes everything better? Well, then you better think again. That's coming up next on this video. Hello everybody, this is Dr. Novak again. Look at the millivolt reading of this redox meter here. 352. That's saltwater territory for a freshwater tank. But now look at the millivolt reading here. 201. What happened to the aquarium? Well, I'll tell you what happened to the aquarium. I changed the water. I changed over 15 gallons of water out of my tank. I did that on purpose to change a lot of water. Now, if you watch my other two videos, water out of the taps come in over 500 millivolt reading, which is because it has chlorine and chloramine in it, which are uh, happen to be deoxifiers, and much like hydrogen peroxide and bleach. <clears throat> but if you look at this number, and you look at the number preceding it, that's 151 millivolts less after a water change. Now, you would suspect that if the tap water is coming out to be over 500, why is the tank water actually went down in value instead of going up in value? Remember what I told you before, that once the chloramine or chlorine has gassed off out of the water, you don't really have a 500 redox. The reason it's 500 is because when it's in your pipes, it is a um, germs, it kills germs, algae, things like that. And that needs to stay very high because that is a detoxifier, which makes our water clean so we can drink it, so we don't wind up getting sick. But once that gas is off, your water will go down normally, like I said, about 250. But here, by changing water, I went down over 151 millivolts just with a simple water change. Now, here's the problem. After about 20 hours after I did the water change, the redox went back up to 352 millivolts. Now, we have to understand 352 millivolts for a freshwater aquarium. That's real, real high. That means you've got a lot of oxidizers and that it means you uh, have a very clean tank and any insults that come into the tank are being taken care of. To give you an example, this is where saltwater aquariums lie in the 350, 375 millivolt range. But you think about what does the saltwater have in it? It has protein skimmers. It may have a refrugum. It may have algae scrubbers. It may have ozone. It may be using socks that are being changed every single day to keep the water pristine. It will... Uh, it may have other means of rollers that help uh, keep the aquarium clean by constantly rolling up the dirty water that's coming into it. Thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars of equipment saltwater aquarium has just to get it up to 350 millivolts. Now here we have a freshwater aquarium, no high tech really, we're using a canister filter, which has been around forever. We are using a top-off system, much like that of reef systems would have. We are, uh, every time we top off, we are polluting the water because, remember, it has iron in it. And I put baking soda in it to help raise the pH because of the substrate of which I'm using. Lowered the pH, and now I'm trying to get that pH back up to 6.8. 
But if you think about it, there's no high-tech equipment really inside of it, except uh, UV light. And of course, saltwater aquariums could be using UV lights also, or they could be using ozone. The point I'm trying to make, all this aquarium has on it is a slow-moving plenum and a BCB basket in the 2480A canister filter. That's all it's using. Nothing high-tech here. But it's using what available technology we know with bacteria and how to complete the nitrogen cycle. It's a very powerful tool. Remember when I told you, when I do a water change, I don't clean the substrate. Substrate hasn't been cleaned in over six months. I have dead and dying leaves in there. If an animal dies, let's say one of my snails had passed away and came out of its shell, and I didn't even notice it was dead until I saw a fish picking on the carcass that was at the bottom of the aquarium. The aquarium was still 352 millivolts, which means the oxidizers in there were taking care of all the insults that were coming into my aquarium, just like salt water. Now, this is something you won't see on other YouTube channels. Does anyone ever, ever lay out their aquarium to you except for ammonia, nitrites, nitrates, uh, KH, GH, the simple stuff. But they really don't ever show you how clean is my aquarium. Why did the aquarium drop as low as it did? It's a good question because after you change your water, you use a dechlor. Well, I do too. 15 gallons is a lot of water and a lot of chlorine. That also lowers it because you are now putting a chemical insult into your aquarium. Anytime you add a chemical to your aquarium, it lowers the redox, the capability of oxidizing insults. Now imagine, imagine if you can, okay, if we dropped 101, 151 millivolts, and let's say your tank is only 125 millivolts, you're going to be in the negative numbers. If you dropped 151 millivolts, if you were 200, you would now be into 49 millivolts if your tank's only that clean. That's a lot. It dropped. It took about 20 hours for it to bounce back up to the 352 millivolt reading. So it had recovered from what I had done by changing the water. Now, I'm only bringing this up to show you. You can see how if tanks aren't doing that well to begin with, how you can actually, by changing water, lessen the water quality. Thinking that you're doing something good by adding chemicals or whatever into your aquarium, when actually you're just now destroying the oxidation potential of that aquarium. Look at the picture that you saw when the video first started. This is one of the hobbyists that uses slow moving plenum. Look at all the fish he has. He has no problems at all with how clean his aquarium is. This is one reason when I showed you old pictures of when I had discus, and I said I didn't even do water changes for months with those discus because of a situation that happened. So I couldn't get to the tank. This is the, perfectly fine. This was never heard of years ago. Never heard of. But look at the reason why. Now you can see why discus do so good with the slow moving plenum and a BCB basket in the canister filter because your redox is 350. The same as a saltwater aquarium that has thousands and thousands of dollars worth of stuff added onto. Because you have to think, I've been using slow moving plenums for 30 plus years. I've had fish like uh, bumblebee catfish, for example, small ones, lived over 15 years. I've had koi that lived over 31 years and they're still alive today. So they're about 32, 33 years old, all done with BCB baskets in ponds. The point I'm trying to make is there's something that they're capable of doing. 
And now I'm proving to you through science of what they're capable of doing and how they can clean water. Now, no other YouTube channel is going to show you this. All they do is hand you a bunch of stuff of what? Just throw the gravel on the bottom of the aquarium, make the gravel this thick. The, did you see anyone, anyone like Father Fish show you how clean his water is? Or what about the Wallstat filtration system where they use mud? Did you see anyone ever show you how clean their water is and what the redox is? No. How about, you know, Aquarium Co-op? Have you ever seen him put his water quality up to the test? No. Nobody out there shows you exactly what their water quality is. Now, we know for a fact that if you make a planted aquarium and jam it full of plants and pump in 30 parts per million of CO2, you're probably going to have better water quality. But unfortunately, not everybody can afford it, and not everybody wants a ton of plants and only eight little or 15 little fishies in there, about one inch big little neons or something. You notice that? A lot of these planted tanks have little baby fish. Look at the guy's picture in the very beginning, his big, huge discus. So this must be the reason why discus that are, were so delicate in the past now are surviving so well using a noxic filtration system. The proof is in the pudding. I can't make it any clearer. But, you know, a lot of people... Ask me questions like, uh, how does the bacteria get the carbon? Well, for now, I'm going to start asking them, before I answer your question, what about father fishes? How does how does bacteria get the carbon? How about the wall stat? How does bacteria get the carbon? How about the people who throw their gravel directly on the bottom of their aquariums? How does bacteria get its carbon? First, answer my questions before I'll answer yours. And there's a lot more questions I'll start asking people that start repetitively asking me questions about bacteria and stuff because I'm going to ask them, well, what about father fishes? What about the wall stat? What about throwing your gravel at the bottom? How do those systems work before you're asking me, how do you know they're doing what they're supposed to be doing? Because mine does the same thing, works also. So from now on, if people ask me those questions, I'm going to be asking them questions to be answered. If you're asking those questions, it means you're not paying attention to how a aquatic system works or, or nobody is telling you because they don't want to tell you the failure or the truth about how their systems aren't coping with what they're supposed to be coping with. I mean, water quality is water quality. There's no if, ands, or buts about it. It's the science. It tells you exactly what kind of water quality. 352 millivolts is saltwater territory, not freshwater territory. That is awful high. But that tells you about the oxidation potential of what I am doing, and I am showing you right off the bat how well the system works. And I have rotting leaves in my aquarium. I have, who knows if, if what else has died, which I didn't find. And the aquarium's doing just fine. And when I did a water change, it bounced back. You got to think about your aquarium now. Let's think about it. Can your aquarium do that? Could your aquarium, after you do a water change and you think you did a lot of good, do you think the redox is high? Do you think it jumps all the way down like mine did? Which is proof in the pudding that when you do a water change, it doesn't mean you have a higher redox. It means you could wind up losing oxidization potential from your aquarium. And if your aquarium cannot bounce back from the insults that you are putting in there, your aquarium will deteriorate. Is this the reason why people make planted aquariums and barely put any fish in? 
barely even feed their fish maybe once every two, three days because they are so scared of destroying their system. It is such on the brink of destruction that they are too scared to put any fish in. They're too scared to even feed their fish. Look, go on the YouTube channels and watch them. Everybody's doing the same thing. They know the more they're going to feed, the more that the fish need, the more their redox potential is just going to keep dropping and dropping, which means their water quality is dropping, which means they have to do more and more and more water changes to keep it up. Technically speaking, at a 350 millivolt reading, you don't have to do a water change. But the only reason I do it is to add elements that are being used up in the aquarium by the animals that live in there, such as snails and fish and everything else, that, that uh, shrimp. They need extra calcium and stuff like that put back into their aquarium to grow their shells and their ectoskeletons, right? So this stuff has to be put back in. But as you notice, I don't clean the substrate itself. The substrate could be full of fish waste, but it's being oxidized. It's being taken care of. It's being taken care of by the bacteria and the oxidation potential of the aquarium itself. So you have to try to understand that. I think what we need to do as hobbyists is to start challenging. I repeat that. We need to start challenging other people who advocate stuff. We need to start challenging them saying, just how clean is your water that you're telling us to do? Just how well is it is it going? Because we know for a fact, if Father Fish is correct and 90% of the people drop out of this hobby because their fish keep dying, we know for correct they're not getting the right information. Nobody is telling them the science behind what they're doing and why they're doing it. They're not telling you the science. Start asking the hardball questions. What is the science? How does it work? What is your redox? What is the oxygen potential of your substrate. All they say, well, the plants bring oxygen to it. Yeah, I can read that out of any book for about, a, you know, 50 cents. I can go to the library and pick up a book and I can read that right out of a book. We all know that. That's, that's nothing new. Oh, the plants bring, okay, well, how much oxygen? How much oxygen is at the bottom of your aquarium? How well are you doing? Can you put fish in? Can I put a lot of fish in? Like the pictures you, uh, people have been sending me about their aquariums. Is my aquarium going to wind up collapsing? Or I have to keep only so many fish and only feed them once every two to three days? Are you kidding me? I'm going to starve my animals? And why do you even have animals? That's cruelty to animals. Don't even buy the animals then if you're going to starve them to death. That, that doesn't even make any sense. If you're going to buy pets and have an Oscar, goldfish, whatever, tropical fish, feed them. If you're so scared, if you're that damn scared that if you feed them, you're going to pollute your aquarium, maybe you're doing something wrong. Doesn't a light go on your head and say, you know what? Maybe I'm doing something wrong if I'm this scared to have fish in my aquarium, make it look real nice without buying some little bitty fish to grow no bigger than a half inch to an inch full size because I'm so scared. In my tank, I have over 80 fish. And the tank you just saw in the very beginning of here, that guy probably has 80 to 90 fish plus his two big, huge uh, seven inch discus. So you have to think about what people are telling you and they're showing no proof of what they're telling you. Make them uh, answer the hardball questions. Ask the hardball question to these people. Don't let them skate by with giving you rhetoric. Anyone can give you rhetoric. I've been going through it for over 30 years. I've been, a I've been asked all the hardball questions, and yet all these other people get to skate through easily, except me. So start asking them the hardball questions. Make them start showing you what they are saying is true to fact, and they do have high water quality, and what they're doing is right, and they're not scared to feed their fish only every two to three days. Ask the hard ball questions to these people. Make them show you, just like I'm showing you, the proof. The proof is in the pudding, as they say, right? So, 
This is something to think about. If your aquarium's not doing that good, you do a water change, your redox is going to get lower. If it can't bounce back, if it takes days to bounce back, and not just a matter of hours, you have something to think about. You're not doing something right. Rethink what you are doing. Because you are doing it wrong. And that's what these videos are about. So you can realize that I want you to be successful, not a failure. I don't sell products to you. I can care less about selling a product to you. When I show you a product and I do a review on it, I tell you if it's good and I tell you if it's bad. End of story. There is no game playing. I tell you the way it is. Anyhow, I thought you would be interested in this video because it shows you, even with the water change, don't think your aquarium is going to be better. It will actually drop in value. And if it cannot recover from what you, the damage you've done, it will keep dropping with every water change and getting worse. Just food for thought. Until next time, this is Dr. Novak. Thank you very much for watching.